Matumaron. My name is David Peterson, and this is the Art of Language Invention. Today's episode, Phonetic Inventories. If you're creating an oral or spoken language, then at some point in time you're going to need to come up with your sound system, also called a phonology. Phonology can get pretty complicated, but all languages do have a finite set of sounds that they're going to use in their language to make uh, syllables and words and whatnot. If you're a conlanger just starting out, it is possible to start with just a phonetic inventory of all the sounds that are going to be in the language and then figure out their relationships later. To get us started looking at phonetic inventories, let's look at the phonetic inventory of English. Here, for example, is every single consonant used in the English language, or at least in my version of the English language, the one that I speak, you know, every day. Um, You'll recognize some of these sounds if you're a conlanger or, of course, if you've studied linguistics. If not, what you're looking at is what's called the International Phonetic Alphabet. If you want to figure out more about it, uh, click on the link and uh, you can find out more at Wikipedia. Anyway, this is every single consonant that is used in my version of English. Or, if you want to get technical, um, these are actually every single consonant that I use uh, when I'm speaking English, um, at least for making meaning distinctions. Turning our attention to the vowels, here are all the vowels that I use in English. Or, if you're a real stickler, Mr. Meeseeks, uh, here are all the vowels that I use in my English. Again, these characters are a part of the International Phonetic Alphabet, so if you'd like to hear their sounds, uh, click the link and go over to Wikipedia to get a really basic intro to it. Now compare that set of consonants and vowels found in English to the total possible number of sounds that we could produce at those places of articulation um, using just kind of the manners that we have here in English. Here are the consonants, and here are the vowels. Look at that crazy cast of kooky characters. There's whole bunches of stuff there. Now, of course, there was a lot of work that went into producing the modern phonology of English, both all of the sounds that are found in English and their individual alternations. If you're a conlanger just starting out, though, and you just want to get going and need to pick some sounds and don't know where to start, this is what you could do. The following is a set of basic consonants followed by a set of basic vowels. What do I mean by basic? All of the world's languages use most of these sounds. Most of the world's languages use all of these sounds. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, not all languages are going to pronounce each of these sounds exactly the same way. So, for example, the first T in the English word state is pronounced differently from the T in the Spanish word estado, even though both words are cognates. The idea behind the basic inventory is that every single language, for example, is going to have a voiceless coronal stop. Well, not every language, but most languages. In fact, if you want to see how these basic inventories match up with some of the world's languages, here goes. Spanish and French, for example, have every consonant except for H. The main dialect of Hawaiian has every single one of these consonants except for T and S. Arabic has every single one of these sounds except for P. They just have B over there in Arabic. And depending on your analysis, Japanese has every single one of these sounds except for L. They kind of have one sound that's kind of an R or L-like sound. Um, and they have every single vowel except for U, which instead is unrounded and comes out U. It's very important to remember that a phonetic inventory is not the same thing as a phonology or a sound system. But if you're looking for a place to get started, this is as good a place as any. That'll do it for this episode. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on the show, leave a note in the comments or send me an email at djpquery at gmail.com. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.